It's time to wake up, witches. I'm your host, Kat Adams, and I'm here to remind you that no matter where you're at in life, you're not stuck. And we are back with episode two of Dead Bedrooms. Do, do, do. Yeah, I am in the Halloween mood. I know it's only July, but I have already been Halloween shopping. Not going to lie. It's my favorite holiday. Obviously, I'm into all things witchy. And if you haven't been on TikTok lately, I know I have a love-hate relationship with it. I get it. I get it. Go on there and check me out because I have been working really, really hard on my TikToks lately and it's finally growing a little bit, but it could be growing a lot more with your help. So go to my TikTok, like my videos. I've got lots of good truth bombs on there too, as well as here in my podcast and in my books. I'm a jack of all trades, but back to the spooky ship. So TikTok has this thing where it's like a TikTok um, crafty thingy and you go to a thrift store and you find like an old piece of art. It could be like, you know, an old barn or an old uh, French cafe, French bistro. And you get it and buy like, buy it for like five bucks or something. Cause you're at a Goodwill or a thrift store. So it should be cheap. And then you paint ghosts in the windows. Or you paint like little spooky scenes. So we did that this weekend. I had a, um, a date day, night kind of with my husband and my daughter also joined in on this fun with this painting project. So we made charcuterie and we got, I went overboard as I always do. <laughs> we got like five or six pictures from the thrift shops and we all sat down and we painted our ghost in them and it turned out awesome and super fun. Like it was a super fun project. It's hard to tear my daughter away from her computer these days and her phone, but she was all into it. And we baked cookies and it was just a great night. It was a great night. And I highly recommend it if you're looking for uh, some kind of project you can do with children or just as a date night with your husband. Um, If you heard my last episode, maybe this is something you need to work on. If you have that little libido doing some quality time something fun without the kids. Send the kids to grandma's house and get some wine go thrifting with your husband and have just a fun paint, paint spooky ghost night. And then, you know, also, Hey, if you really like that painting thing, there's this thing called, Oh crap. What's it called? I think it's called love is art. I'll have to try to remember. You can Google it. It's basically you get this canvas sheet and you put paint all over it and then you you fuck on it. And it's so much fun. We did that and we actually, and it's creating an artwork, basically. You're creating a passion piece. We have it and we actually have it hanging in our bedroom and we wrote on it. Um, <laughs> we met on Tinder and like, because it's black and white. And then I wrote in like bougie glittery pink on it. We met on Tinder. It's super cute, super fun. Just throwing that idea out there since we're talking about sex, which I should have started off with. If you have little ears around, you may have already noticed, but kick them out. Do not listen to this when children are around because it's not child appropriate because we're going to talk about all things dingling today. Like a dingling today. This is the low libido part of this two part series. So, first part, if you haven't listened to it, go back. It's for actually, wait, vice versa. It's for high libido. The last one was for if you have a low libido. If you're a woman with low libido, how that is unfair to yourself. Yes, it's unfair to your partner, but you know what? I want to mainly focus my podcast is focused on women. I'm trying to help women help your partner all you want. I'm focused on you here, okay? So I'm going to be real with you. And we're going to talk about, again, dead bedrooms. And I'm not going to address what I addressed in the last episode. If you're wondering about, oh, well, I never want to have sex with my husband. I just have no mood. Go listen to episode one. I addressed that there. This one is for my husband doesn't want to have sex with me. 
My husband is never in the mood. What can I do? And I'm going to tell you all about that because a lot of people are like, a lot of people don't even know this. A lot of women are gasping right now as they're listening. They're like, oh, no way. Dudes always want sex. Actually, they don't. And I am seeing this more and more often, especially as women who are in their 30s and hitting their sexual prime and they don't have a man that can keep up or a man who wants to keep up or they have a man with problems. Now, if you are a high libido woman and you listened to my last episode, you were probably feeling a little bit of friction and tension as in like, yeah, you know, that's bullshit. Partners denying partners is a form of abuse. If you're de- denying your partner or bargaining with your partner uh, sexual intimate acts, then yes, it is actually a form of abuse. So if you're high libido and your person is denying you, you there's a lot of tension surrounding it. I get it. You might think, you know, that's bullshit. You should do it. You should make that sacrifice for your partner. But we can't think that way. Even if we're, um, even if you're high libido and you just need to get fucked. So you've got a lot of tension and sexual frustration and pressure in your leg. Just fuck your partner. You can't think like that because there's lots of issues going on here. You can think like that if you have tried anything and everything and your partner is being abusive towards you and just not taking your needs into consideration, then maybe let some of that frustration out and it's absolutely valid. It's always valid. Your feelings are always valid. But I wanted to do that episode first with a low libido for the low libido women because one, you need to understand if you're a high libido person, woman, man, whoever, where they're coming from. And two, I think that's more often the case. And at least from what I hear, but as I see this other part growing of high libido women, low libido men, I want to address that too. And I hate to freaking admit it, but I have so much experience in this in this subject. It fucking sucks. It fucking sucks. So Let me, um, I need some alcohol to talk about this one. Let me go ahead and start explaining to you what a dead bedroom looks like for a high libido woman. And let me know if you can relate. And let me tell you some of the things you can do about it. If you're on Reddit, go ahead and go to the dead bedroom subreddit. Catch up on it read on it. And I recommend this for, I should have started out with this on episode one. I recommend for both high libido and low libido men and women to go to the subreddit so you can get firsthand accounts of what is happening in people's marriages. And you can either one, feel a sense of community or two, get some ideas on how to fix some things or three, realize that you're not alone and see some of the success success stories. And I'll be honest with you, there's like no success success stories unless the people get out of it and then go back and rave about how amazing it is to be out of a dead bedroom as one of them. So let's carry on here and let me explain to you a couple things that I see and I notice when you have a low libido, 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 Hmm. when you have a low libido husband. And side note, in my experience, from what I have seen, if you go down this dead bedroom subreddit rabbit hole, here's what happens. These people go from the dead bedroom subreddit to the adultery subreddit to the divorce subreddit. So I hate to be like hopeless when it comes to being in a dead bedroom marriage. But I'm going to be real with you and I'm going to tell you shit that you don't want to hear, but you're going to have to hear it because I would not be, I would be lying to you if I was going to tell you that, oh, well, it's okay. You can fix this because if you are the high libido partner and your partner is a low libido partner, it's hard to fix a low libido partner. 
they have to fix that on their own, which is why episode one, when I was talking to women with low libido, I told them, like, if you figure out if it's a you or him problem, figure it out. So dead bedrooms, let's get to talking about it. Why do men have dead bedrooms? And I'm getting this so freaking much lately. Oh my gosh. I have friends, family members who muster up the courage because it takes a lot of courage as a woman to say, my husband doesn't ever want to have sex with me because we are programmed by society to think men want it all the time and women don't. So when we want it as a woman, we're usually shamed, slut shamed, right? By whoever, even ourselves at times, or um, we think something's wrong with us. Or if your partner cannot match you, you definitely think something's wrong with you. If your husband does not want sex with you and you're listening to this, you know you think something is wrong with you. And I'm here to tell you, nothing is wrong with you. Women want sex just as much as men. It is healthy. It is natural. There is nothing wrong with you. If your husband does not want sex with you, that is a him problem. Unless you're an abusive bitch and that's a valid concern and that could be a you problem. But I'm going to talk about the most common reasons I see this. So if you are finding yourself in a dead bedroom, with a low libido husband and you're like, I don't know what's going on. Here could be, this could be some reasons. Porn addiction, oh my gosh, is very, very real. And that sucks, dude. When your husband would rather watch a woman on screen than you, that is going to kill your confidence. That is a huge problem. So start there because that's like one of the number one problems is why he's turning you down is because he's getting it with his hand. So if your husband has a porn addiction, that could be one of the answers to your problems. Two, if he has a porn addiction, there's something called death grip. It's a real thing. It is when a dude jerks off so much that he starts losing sensation because he's ha- he has a death grip on his dingling. And when he has sex, he can't get that death grip sensation because it's not natural to be squeezing the ever-loving life out of your Peter with your JJ. And so they lose that sensation and then they fall into erectile dysfunction. They can't get it up. And once that happens, then it's going to be a mind fuck. And not the good kind of mind fuck because they're going to be like, oh my God, I can't get it up. I can't please my wife. So every time now you want to be intimate, they're going to come up with an excuse because either uh, they're too, because mainly they're too afraid they're going to have ED again. And that's very embarrassing for them. And they're thinking already before they even try that that's going to happen. So they'll come up with an excuse not to do it or they'll try to do it. And It'll, you know, they'll have an issue getting it up and then they're not going to want to do it. And it's a vicious cycle because it turns from into or from having the death grip, which is a true thing, to having this in their head that creates anxiety to where they're not in the mood because they can't get it up because all they're thinking about is, oh, my gosh, I'm not going to be able to please my wife. And then you as the wife, you're thinking, what did I do? That's why he never wants to have sex with me. He can't even get it up. I can't even make him hard. I don't turn him on. It's because I'm ugly. It's because I gained 10 pounds. It's because I have all these kids and these stretch marks and I just look like shit. See that vicious cycle? That's what happens in a dead bedroom. At least that's one answer to the question on why your husband doesn't want to fuck you. The other answer is he's having an affair. I know, obvious. And it sucks to hear that. Oh my gosh, it sucks to hear that. I'm so sorry to tell you that could be the reason. Am I saying he's cheating on you? Hell no. Am I saying he could be cheating on you? Yeah. Yep, he could. So let me just be vulnerable for a little bit and tell you my experience in this situation. I am a very high libido woman. No shame at that. And when I was in my abusive marriage, my husband and I did not have an intimate relationship. And 
I mean, we weren't as bad as like some of this stuff you'll read on subreddit. Some of these people on the dead bedroom subreddit have not had sex in five plus years with their spouse. Okay. That is bad. It was not that bad, but it could have been that bad. It was just, I was a nag about it, which, you know, should I have been? Probably not. I don't know. Whatever. I was stuck in a dead bedroom. It was one of the abuses I experienced, that denial of having intimate contact. And whenever I asked about it, I thought it was a porn issue. Of course, he said, no, no, no. Then he was, you know, very abusive and secretive. He had told me that, you know, he, I I wasn't allowed to look at his phone ever. I wasn't allowed to ride in his car. So naturally I thought he already was cheating on me all these years. This was happening. And he would tell me I was crazy. He gaslighted the shit out of me. Like, no, I'm not having an affair. Are you fucking kidding me? You're fucking crazy. You're fucking stupid. I just, I don't ever want sex. I don't need it. It's just me. After the divorce, his affair partner's husband contacted me. I believe I've mentioned this already in a podcast episode, so I'm not going to rehash it again. It's also in my book that's up for pre-order, releasing in October. You can hear the full story there. But this whole time for years, I was being denied on top of being abused in all sorts of ways, just being denied having an intimate connection with my husband, even though back then, you know, it wasn't me even, I wanted it. Of course I want it. Everyone wants it to have someone like that in their lives, but being abused, I also just had sexual needs. I needed to get met and they weren't getting met. So you know, what am I supposed to do? Um, yeah, going back, looking back now after being told and actually believing, I mean, yeah, a little part of me believed that he wasn't having an affair, but I was just gaslit so much that I did believe he wasn't lying and he truly just had a low libido. And then I found out, no, that's not the case. So he was out there fucking women and then bringing it home to me in the rare chances we did and putting me at risk of having STDs from these ratchet ass bitches he was fucking. So yes, I hate to say it. And I see it on the dead bedroom subreddit a lot. These women and men are like, could my partner be having an affair? And they'll lay down like all these, these signs that, you know, I experienced myself and they're like, but I don't think he would. He's not that type. Let's be honest and real. Sometimes it is hard to identify that they are doing that, but it is absolutely a thing. Yes, they could be having an affair. Now, I do not want a bunch of angry husbands contacting me saying, my wife said, because I didn't fuck her, you told her I was fucking everybody else. That's not what I'm saying, although it kind of is, but it's not. I'm saying you could be and. Someone who is high libido and who is questioning their relationship and why you're low libido actually can have, that's a valid concern. They're allowed to ask that. They're allowed to think that because it's not healthy in a relationship to not, uh, to deny your partner's sexual needs. Um, Like I said, it's a form of abuse and it's just, it's not healthy. Everyone Unless you're truly asexual or you have issues like you're having chemo or things like that and you truly have like medical problems or something blocking you from having sex, then not having a healthy, sexual, mutually satisfying relationship in your marriage, because again, it's a marriage, you're not roommates, is not healthy. It's toxic. So if you know, your husband is denying you. It could be one of those things, a fear. It could be death grip. It could be porn addiction, or it could be you're an asshole. And I know you don't want to hear that either, but I actually asked my, my new husband, this, who is amazing. I asked him, I was like, Hey, what would make a guy give his wife a dead bedroom besides the things I just listed? And he listed all those. He agreed with me. He said, Also, if she's like just mean to me, if she's uh, wants to fight all the time, is she being a Karen? Like, is she just bitchy and negative? Like no one wants to have a, no one wants to have a 
great sexual relationship with a sourpuss. And that's probably the, the wrong, the wrong word. Or is it? That might be like the perfect word to describe what I'm trying to describe here. Um, I'm cracking myself up. But yes, ask yourself, are you the problem? Are you just a nagging bitch who isn't in tune with your husband's needs and it's all about you because that also could be a problem. But that is not what I see most of the time in the cases. It's flipped and I'm sorry to say it's unfair, but for low libido women and high libido men, I see it mostly as the man is the problem. You know, he's not being attractive because he's not helping out around the house. He ain't doing shit. But when it is a high libido woman and a low libido man, it is also the problem is men. I mean, that's kind of par for the course in life these days anyway. So I guess it shouldn't come as a shock and surprising. This is, I'm just realizing this too. Like the problem is usually men too. And honestly, it's usually porn addiction. I will just say that that's number one. It is porn addiction. Look up the stats. Like if your husband is choosing a screen over you, Just he needs to get help or you need to leave because that is not fair to you. And if you ask them, what are you supposed to do to get your needs met? Because you do have sexual needs. So are you supposed to outsource and have an affair or are they actually going to step up and meet your needs? Because they're going to say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll try probably or just outright no. And, you know, they're not going to change. If you've been through this before and two, if um, you bring up the affair thing, they're obviously going to say no and they're going to get really, really pissed off. So here you are, you're not getting your needs met again and you're not having that intimate connection because it's like I said, it is more than just sex. When you're having regular healthy sex, you're also having that vulnerability and intimacy with someone and you need that in life to have a healthy, happy life. You absolutely need it. It's not just like, oh, well, I'm just getting my rocks off. Although it can be as well. I mean, sometimes you just need to get your rocks off. But most humans need that intimate, personal connection with their partner. Otherwise, your partner is just your roommate. And you didn't get married for that. I remember my last straw when I accepted that I'm not going to live my life in a roommate situation anymore was when I had a girl's night. Yes, it was back in 2019. No, actually, I think it was in the end of 2018. I had a girl's night. And some of the girls there were like, oh, my gosh. My husband would not keep his hands off of me as I was getting ready. He was like, oh, you never dress up like this for me. And he just kept grabbing on me. He just wouldn't leave me alone. And she was rolling her eyes and so disgusted and just like so over her husband, paying her these compliments. And then the other woman was like, oh, yeah, my husband told me I better come home drunk because he wants to get some tonight. Now, me, as a high libido woman stuck in a dead bedroom, felt like shit hearing these women talk. For one, I'm like, I would kill to have my husband say those things to me. I would love it for my husband to be grabbing on me and unable to keep his hands off me. And then this other part of me, that is the tension part going back to one or episode one that I was talking about this dead bedroom situation where we have to be careful as a high libido woman who's turned down. I was thinking, wow, really? You're going to be that way talking that shit about your husband, like rolling your eyes and acting disgusted that your husband was touching you and couldn't keep his hands off you and that you're acting disgusted because the things he was saying and that you have to be drunk to have sex with your husband. You have to be inebriated to desire your husband. Huge red flag there, by the way. If you have to be not sober, high drunk, whatever, to want to have desire for your husband, you need to start thinking very seriously about your relationship. 
So lots of red flags in that conversation that I was picking up. But these women were talking back and forth like it was just everyday life and it was normal. And I started feeling abnormal. And then I just was like, fuck this. I'm not going to live this way anymore. And that was the beginning stages of my divorce and me taking control of my life and saying, I'm tired of not feeling desirable. I'm tired of not having that intimate connection. Like I am, I am an Enneagram four. If you don't know what that is, I am a romantic. I am a lot to handle and very um, challenging and expensive person. (laughs) I'm kidding. Mostly I am a romantic. I absolutely do thrive on romance and deep feelings. And when I'm not getting that connection and one of the ways that human beings, not just me, get that connection is through intimacy. I'm in not the best place. I have to have those needs met. And I was not getting that in my marriage on top of all the other abuses. So I said, not going to do it anymore. And I didn't. And the day I signed the divorce papers was the day your girl got on Tinder and the day I met my new husband and the rest is freaking history. Like, oh my gosh, I never knew sex life could be so good. I'm just going to put it all out there because I'm not ashamed about it because this is women. This is real life women. Real life women aren't, oh, you know, like, hoo hoo, you know, my, you just whatever, kiss and don't tell. Like, women are talking about this shit now. Women are taking control of their sex life and there's no shame in it. I don't want to be the woman who has to be drunk to want to screw my husband. I don't want to have that kind of relationship ever. I've been in that relationship where you just, you don't want to do it or you do want to do it and your partner doesn't want to do it. And it sucks balls and not in the fun way of sucking balls. It sucks balls. And now being on the other side and having someone where we match chemistry still four years later, it's been almost four years, four years later, no, no decrease in anything here. Still very, very happy and very, very satisfied. I can't believe like it's even the night and day change in my mood and in my confidence and in my trust. Well, let me tell you, that's probably the biggest thing. Like I'm not spending my energy on, I wonder if he's just addicted to porn. I wonder if he's just following like cam girls or he's on OnlyFans or I wonder if he's having affairs and always wondering and, you know, wanting to look at their credit cards or whatever to dig and find the information because you're asking yourself constantly, why does my husband not want to have sex with me? I don't spend any of that energy anymore on any of that because I trust my husband completely. I don't have to spend my energy on that. We spend our energy wearing each other out. Ain't no shame in that. And it's amazing. So I know. Did I say too much? Oh, God. I hope I didn't say too much. But you know what? Another part of being an Enneagram 4 is being authentic. And I want to be as authentic as possible because a lot of women need to hear this. You have no idea how many women I have in my life right now who whose husbands don't want to fuck them. And they're so ashamed to talk about it because they see it as a reflection of something's wrong with them. And I'm here to tell you, nothing is wrong with you. It is totally okay that you have a sex drive. It's totally normal that you have a sex drive. What's not normal is that you're not getting your needs met and you need to fix that. So answer the question, like in episode one, why your husband is not wanting to have sex with you. Um, figure that out. Also, I, I don't can't believe I forgot about this. Testosterone. That's a true real thing. If you know, you don't think he's having an affair or, or addicted to porn or whatever, go get his testosterone checked. That is absolutely a thing. It could be that he's got low testosterone. Or he just could be an asshole who's denying you your needs or, you know, having affairs, whatever. Answer that question and then answer the question to yourself, what are you going to do about it? So 
Is it a you thing? Probably not. I mean, sometimes it could be. Are you a Karen? Because that's a turnoff. But if it's not, if it's a him thing, ask him to fix it. Go to counseling. Do what you need to do. If he doesn't, ah, I'm going to get so much flack for this. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. I know what it's like to live in a loveless marriage, to live as roommates, to live as friends instead of lovers. And it's just, that's to me, not what life is all about at all. And again, I know back to the Enneagram 4 thing, I am super romantic. So this probably hits me harder than a lot of people, but life is too short to live in a dead bedroom and to deny yourself of an intimate relationship and great sex. No, sex is not everything, but when you have a partner in your life who you can be balls to the wall vulnerable with and have that intimate connection with and be on the same level, it frees your energy up for so much more. And it is just... It's unicorn rainbow farts and glitter. It absolutely is. And I highly recommend if you are in the stud bedroom marriage and you do make the decision to exit because I, you know, that's usually the answer to that situation. Again, go to the dead bedroom subreddits and read for yourself. If you make the decision to exit, don't settle for less again. A lot of the time it's just mismatched sex drives and you owe it to yourself to find someone who is on your level. Otherwise you're going to go down the same rabbit holes and you're going to be fighting, arguing. You're going to end up that bitter couple who never does it or only does it on like Valentine's days and anniversaries. And that ain't the way to live ladies. You're worth so much more. I have a feeling I'm going to get a lot of angry comments from men saying, you told my wife to divorce me. Yeah, 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 I did. Best thing that ever happened to me, you know, there's so much more to play than lack of sex in mind. You know, abuse, obviously, that's what this whole podcast is pretty much about. But you're not stuck. You're not stuck in your dead bedroom. You're not stuck in your shitty marriage. You're not stuck in your shitty career. You're not stuck in your miserable situation. You can take action no matter what that action is, and go get your happily ever after. Go get your self-railed. Go get on Tinder. Go take control of your sex goddess life because it's 2023 and ain't nobody going to help you except you have to help yourself. So that's my advice for you high libido women out there who have a fuddy-duddy man who refuses to match that energy. And I know I broke some hearts today, and I'm probably going to get some hate for that, but it's the truth. Highly recommend that dead bedroom, dead bedroom subreddit. So go to Reddit, search dead bedrooms, and read through those posts. You're not alone. There's a lot of women out like out there like you, and it's not your fault. There's nothing, nothing wrong with you. But if you tell me you're stuck in a dead bedroom, I'm going to tell you, no, you're not. Thank you so much for listening. If you love the show, please leave a rating, a review. And if you know anyone who also might love the show or who could benefit from this information, please be sure to share it and subscribe. The more we get this out to people, the more people we can help. And I truly believe there's so many women who need to hear these words because so many women are feeling stuck. Also, if you're looking for me, you can usually find me on the gram at author Kat Adams and be sure to head over to my website and that's Kat Adams, Adams with a double D's dot com. Subscribe to my newsletter for the latest information Also, when you subscribe, you're going to get a free novella. And just be forewarned, my raunchy rom-com is as dirty as my mouth. So if that's your thing, go for it. It's super hilarious. But thank you again for tuning in. Until next time, please stay safe and I'll see you on the other side. 